I'm gonna get right to it since we only got three minutes. I spent six years in the street um, after I got kicked out of high school. Then I spent two years in college um, studying to be a paralegal. Then I got locked up for 11 unjust years that is still unanswered, but we'll get to that. Um, let me see where I'm gonna go from there. Five years on parole, four years of college, CUNY BA student, John Jay, and two years in philanthropy. So this is where my experience come from. Now, as soon as you get to prison, or rather jail, you're supposed to strip naked, right? And be inspected for gang tattoos. So you could go into a gang database if they at least allege that one of those tattoos are gang, right? But what we're not addressing here is the state violence and the safety of the community. And all of the white, hundreds of white correctional officers in Beacon Correctional Facility, Bedford Hills Correctional Facility, Taconic Correctional Facility, and Albion Correctional Facility, not every single one, but hundreds of them, they have tattoos of black babies tatted on their arms with a noose around their neck, and they wear it proudly. And I'm sure if we took off some of these uniforms and some of these suit and ties, we will see those same black babies with nooses around their neck. This is about culture. This is not about structure. In 11 years, I lost nine appeals. I lost a clemency. I lost a violent felony override, even though there was no allegation on any side of any violence, just mere possession of a weapon. Denied, denied, denied. Also given four extra months in prison time, and if you hear the way that I'm speaking today, you gonna know why. So, in Bayview Correctional Facility, which is a medium correctional facility for women that was located on West 20th Street in Chelsea Piers, organizers like the one from No New Jails was out there screaming, no jails, and I had no idea why they were screaming at. We were just looking at the penthouse across the street and the porno shows that we used to see. Guards told us to hurry up to go to our rooms, close our ears. No books. It's 2011. The books in the library, why are they dated 1996? I'm looking for one in 2000. I'm looking for one for current information. It's absent. In Bayview Correctional Facility, I spent two years there. I worked inside of the Grievance Committee. And the reason why I chose that position is because hundreds of women from every facility that I was in were telling me stories about them being molested and raped and ignored. And then having to watch that same officer and have to ask him for a sanitary pad is humiliating. Women and girls should not be in jails, they should not be in prisons, but I'm gonna calm down so y'all can hear me. With the over 700 unanswered grievances and denials washed away into Hurricane Sandy, and all these women do is close their eyes and see those horror stories, and these correctional officers still keep their jobs while we are locked in cages, held captive. Now, the abuse that's in there is gonna have, we cannot run out of time because this is important. Bayview Correctional Facility washed away, but the memories that I had from all those grievances and in the investigations did not. 22% sexual abuse rate is because I demanded that women wrote it down. Do not be afraid, speak out. In comparison to all four other facilities, it was 2.2% complaints. Now you do the math on that. One last thing, one last thing I will say, because there's a lot to say. I'm a BPI fellow. I'm a college and community fellowship um, um, a fellow. And I'm also a Ford Foundation fellow. In 2011, over 2,000 people in jails and prisons filed for NYC 210 tax forms. It was a scandal that the state robbed those people, both men and women, of all that money. And I need the state to do an investigation on that now. Everything that I say here is documented. My whole entire incarceration, I've made sure everybody documented every complaint. So before this construction of these new jails, if you're gonna be fair to the people, seriously, do that investigation first and talk to women and girls who had wrote those complaints. Um, one other thing, 
Hurricane Sandy, I need y'all to do another investigation. We were not allowed to see our families, call our families for two days. And after we called them, we were not allowed to tell them when we would go back to see them in this new nice jail that was close to home. We did not know where we would see them. Over 700 complaints of step theft from guards in which we all filed complaints and did get compensation for. There was a significant spike during this time of mental illness and new cases after the evacuation of Hurricane Sandy and displaced to all four prisons. Nobody cared about their feelings because they're property of the state and they will be shipped wherever the state wants them to go. Inside of a mental health cell, from this situation, I was stripped naked, put in a cell with a camera, no tissue, no pen, no books, no soap, no toothpaste, no toothbrush, no shower, no lotion, freezing cold, no pennies to hold the bloody pad between my legs for the entire duration that I spent there. I ate with my hands. Never in my life have I ever attempted suicide. Never in my life have I ever felt suicide. Never in my life would you find that documented and never will I life will I ever do it. In 2012, in Bedford Hills Psychiatric Center, I witnessed horrible, horrific screams coming from a woman who was mentally ill as guards and mental health beat her to a bloody pulp, and I don't even know if she's alive today. That needs to be investigated as well. Thousands of these stories need to be investigation, investigated before this decision. No new jails, and I put out a new song today. Holla if you hear me, it's Puzzle. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.